you know, I think we all need to fundamentally rethink what education means and are we really learning the skills that are going to be important in the 21st century. You got to pick yourself up, go backwards and slam yourself at the wall like 500 more times until the wall crumbles. 25% of middle school girls already believe they'll never achieve their dream career. Dream career. Hi, I'm Kara Golden, founder and CEO of Hint. Hint. And you're Hint. listening to Unstoppable, a podcast spotlighting the journeys of inspiring entrepreneurs. I believe that at its core, leadership is about constantly learning from the people around you. And I'm so inspired by the conversations we're having in our upcoming episodes and can't wait to share them with you. This season, some of my guests include Rebecca Minkoff, fashion designer and founder of the Female Founder Collective, Diana Kapp, author of Girls Who Run the World, Andrew Dudham, founder of Hymns, and Eugene Rem, co-founder of Rumble Fitness, and much, much more. Plus, we ask the million dollar question, what does it really take to be unstoppable? Unstoppable. Unstoppable. Let's find out. Hi everybody, it's Kara from Unstoppable. Super excited to have our next guest here today, Stephen Wolf Carrera. I had to practice that a few times before I had the guts to actually come on and say it. It's such an awesome last name. He is the CEO and co-founder of Encantos, a direct-to-consumer multicultural entertainment and education company that's on a mission to becoming the most impactful, entertainment-driven ed tech company in the world. Yay! Woohoo! Stevens, an Emmy-nominated executive producer and was named by Adweek as one of the 50 most indispensable executives in marketing, media, and tech. He's a champion of women's leadership and diversity initiatives, as well as STEAM education, and he's known for his influential work in marketing, media, and technology. And Canto's mission is to create a house of family entertainment, educational brands, and multicultural content for families, and I can't wait to have you all hear more. Only one slice against uh, Stephen. He he recently moved from the Bay Area down to that other southern city, so we uh, we won't hold it too badly against you, but we're, we're really excited to have you here. San Francisco, LA, but I'm a born and raised New Yorker, so, uh, you know, it's all just California to me. I'm still figuring it out. I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so first of all, talk about you. You've got an extensive background in tech and finance and media from roles at Quancast, Newstar, and Oracle. What inspired you to direct that knowledge towards educational technology for children? So thanks for having me, Kara. And I'm a huge fan of yours, and I drink Hint Water all day long here as awesome. I quarantine at home. Um, and I cannot wait for your book. So, uh, you know, we'll put that on blast. It's been a long, strange journey as a recovering uh, finance person that decided to really take, I guess, everything that I've learned in the past 20 years working in technology and really kind of put it all together to create an entertainment driven ed tech company. I think a lot of it really had to do with two kind of life events that happen and really put some what you're doing with your time really in focus. One was the birth of my first son. I have two kids, uh, Sebastian is five and my daughter Sam is two and a half. So that was obviously incredibly impactful. And the other was the loss of my parents. My father passed in 2011 and my mother ended up passing in 2016. She was on the last legs of cancer. And, you know, she was only able to experience my son uh, for you know his first year, but those are the kind of events that really make you question how are you going to spend your time, right? You know, like life is short. You really want to think about your legacy and what is going to be your contribution to the world. And I feel that my first, you know, kind of uh, 20 plus years in business, as I like to call it, the front nine, was really spent on you know kind of technology, enterprise SaaS, direct to consumer brands, marketing. And I wanted to bring all of that into something that I'm just truly passionate about, which is I've always been passionate about education. And now you're at this moment where everything is going direct to consumer. And I felt like the one place that was truly just ripe for disruption was education. And it was personal because now I had a son and trying to think about why do you have all this incredible personalization and technology applied to advertising, e-commerce, content, but for whatever reason, education is still stuck in the past. 
And so that was really the inspiration. And then do as this really interesting overlay when you look around, you know, my family's from the Dominican Republic with over 50% of kids today being diverse, you really have this incredible lack of representation in education and entertainment. So it really just felt that I was kind of born to help build this company and here we are. So obviously you're, you know, inspired a lot by your family, your upbringing, you know, your, your parents, all, all of these factors. So what, but you actually went and developed products, right? I mean, like that is, I mean, it's kind of crazy. Like, I mean, like, like I developed a product as well. I mean, coming from, you know, AOL and CNN and service businesses, right. Which were all great. But I, but sort of, how did you, what was your first thing that you did? Like, what made you kind of like, feel like, okay, I can go do this. I mean, what, what inspired you? Well, to be honest, I mean, I think a lot of direct-to-consumer entrepreneurs inspired me, you know, candidly, folks like you, um, look, look at what Warby Parker has done, look at Dollar Shave Club, look at Jen Rubio and Away. Um, you've really seen this revolution happening where folks can really take control of their customer experience by going direct. And I feel that because I was working as a CMO for three different technology companies, um, Data Logics, which got acquired by Oracle, a public company called Newstar, which got taken private by Golden Gate Capital. And my last stint was at an AI analytics company called Quantcast. I had been working very closely with all these direct to consumer companies. And so when you understand that you actually have a direct relationship with the consumer, it just was this kind of revelation that every industry, every company, every brand is going to have to go direct. And you see it happening now. I mean, you know, now in the times of COVID, just look at every single industry being disrupted. And if they don't have a direct relationship with the consumer, you know, they're going to really be hurting. And so I just felt that if I've been working with all these companies and I had this kind of direct experience up close and personal, helping them engage with audiences and understand how to use data and really connect and engage with them, why couldn't I do that for something that I was passionate about? And it turned out that I was able to really take all those experiences and really with some other co-founders really build together this idea of direct to consumer brands that would be focused on family entertainment and education, or as we like to call it, direct to learner brands. That's awesome. And so your first product, mm -hmm. how did so, that, you, how'd you do that? So my co-founders, um, it was my wife and I as one family and then another family, a dear friend of mine, Susie Jaramillo. Uh, Susie is a Venezuelan American and her husband who's Colombian, Carlos Hoyos. We co-founded the company together back in 2016. And the first product was really solving a very basic need, which was there is no bilingual infant toddler brand that is culturally authentic when it comes to the Spanish speaking market. And so here you have two Latin, you know, Latino families. Um, Susie's kids are a little bit older. They're now 10 and eight. Um, but it was kind of crazy that you have almost 30% of the US uh, kids population being Hispanic, but there literally is nothing out there for learning, you know, two languages at the same time. And so the first product, we do a very lean development approach where we start all of our brands with books. And so from books to animated content to ultimately a subscription app was just launched a couple of months ago. And then next year we have coming out our subscription box, but that's the way that we kind of build all of our brands. We actually have them be both digital and physical and we have passive and active ways to engage with the brand. That's amazing. And so how many brands then do you have underneath? So the goal, the goal is really, if you take a step back, we're really inspired by 21st century skills. And this was actually watching a TED talk that had deep, deep, you know, profound impact on me, which was Sir Ken Robinson. And he gave a TED talk, actually it's the most watched TED talk of all time, called How Schools Kill Creativity. And it was really inspiring um, to hear someone talk about kind of the educational industrial complex. And why is it that you don't actually, you know, uh, fall into creativity, you fall out of it because we're all naturally creative. And that coincided with this World Economic Forum uh, report on 21st century skills. Like what do kids need to not just survive, but thrive in the 21st century? And so they described three categories, learning skills, which was around creativity, critical thinking, communication, collaboration, literacy skills, way beyond just basic literacy and numeracy, but bilingual literacy, environmental literacy, health and wellness literacy, and not just STEM, but STEAM, and then arguably the most important, life skills. 
How are you going to learn how to be, you know, kind of curious and courageous? How do you learn resilience and grit and all the social emotional skills that kids need to learn? And these are the things that are not being taught in school. And so when you think about that kind of mix of 21st century skills, that was really where we said, we want to build a portfolio very much inspired by like the P&Gs of the world, a house of family brands. And we are going to pick specific 21st century skills to build a brand. And we are going to dominate that lane. And so the first one happened to be bilingual learning. Our new brand, Issa's Edible Adventures, is going to be focused on food and nutrition. Uh, so very, uh, I guess, uh, very relevant for the things that you do. But think about how do kids learn about health and wellness? How do kids learn about the joy of cooking and the importance of food and the science of ingredients? And also to learn about food as culture, you know, like tomatoes don't come from Italy. They're actually from Mexico, you know, having kids that you have miso soup for breakfast in a place like Japan. So really inspiring kids to learn about these different categories. And we have another brand called Tiny Travelers, which is really inspiring kids to be citizens of the world and really help build bridges and not walls. So we're, we're building up our little empire here with family brands. I love it. So COVID, how has that kind of affected the business? Have you noticed, you know, any particular shifts in the business during this time? I mean, you were obviously, you know, perfectly set up to be a direct-to-consumer company before uh, this all happened in comparison to so many other companies. So tell me a little bit more about that. Look, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out and, you know, kind of all, all joking aside, I mean, this has really disproportionately impacted communities of color, as you know, um, low-income families, people that have health issues. Um, so it's really taken a toll, especially in, you know, black and brown communities. And we have, you know, plenty of friends, employees, and family members that have been impacted by it. So um, it really is something that's very serious. And you can really see the income inequality in this country and around the world and how, you know, one group of folks are out in the Hamptons and, you know, kind of living their best life. And they're really able to, you know, work from home, whereas essential workers that have to go into, you know, the Central Valley uh, fields and pick strawberries, like it's, it's a very different experience. So, you know, that as a backdrop, you know, when we started the company, I, I probably spoke with so many different folks about entertainment driven ed tech. And, you know, people would just look at us like, what is ed tech? Like, it's really not interesting. It's not, it just wasn't sexy, right? Because I feel like so many things in venture have to be sexy and on, on trend. But we were steadily building this business and we always believe in going direct to consumer. So the great news is we just connected directly with our audience. I mean, same way that Hint found an audience of rabid fans and they believe in the brand, the purpose and the product. Well, we did the same thing with our first brand, Conticos, because we were really feeling a need because whether you are a Hispanic family that wants to share your culture or a non-Hispanic family that just wants, you know, your kid to be smart because learning another language makes you smarter. You know, we were just chugging along and then COVID hits and all of a sudden everyone wants to talk about ed tech because everyone is at home. I mean, nine out of 10 kids around the planet are stuck at home now learning at home. And our whole approach was blended learning. You need both digital and physical. We have subscription products, but we also have, you know, subscription boxes that would complement that along with, you know, the digital products. So that was the first thing. The second thing is, you now see the advent of every single streaming company out there looking for kids and family content because that is what is going to help reduce churn. So Netflix was certainly first, but then Disney Plus came out and now everyone is looking for some type of kids and family content across all the streamers. And then the third thing, which was really surprising, was Black Lives Matter. And then all of a sudden, everyone wants to talk about diversity. All of a sudden, you know, black lives, brown lives, LGBTQ, like all of these kind of diversity issues are coming to the forefront. And we have been designed from the get go where we have diversity, equality, inclusion at the core of everything that we do, because we are a female owned company with diverse black and brown founders. And so it was really interesting to see these kind of three forces come together. And um, can we like, all of our traffic has been through the roof. Demand has been through the roof. You know, investors are now calling us. Business Insider just listed us as one of the hot media, you know, ed tech startups of 2020. So it's just been a really interesting confluence of events within this backdrop of all this pain and suffering. Interesting. And so it'll be really interesting. Obviously, you know, you're in California and your company is, is nationwide, but I think it's 
it will be very interesting as schools start, right? And I think more and more we're hearing, you know, that the California schools are not going back, right? So you're- LIUSD, the second largest school district in the country. It's all virtual, right? And so it's been really interesting by design, we've gone direct to consumer or again, direct to learner. And I feel like what you're seeing now is, and Scott Galloway is talking about this, you know, incessantly, just this is going to be the true reckoning that we've long expected to happen in education. The only industry where you see price inflation happening over the past 40 years, but the quality of the product hasn't improved. And it's really just been a laggard when it comes to all of the innovation that's happened with digital. And so I really feel that parents are going to look to brands that are going to be trusted to help enrich and supplement the learning of their kids. And that is where we want to be. We want to be the home for 21st century skills and our brands are culture authentic, but they're going to have global appeal, not just national, you know, like same way that Coco wasn't just for Latinos and Black Panther wasn't just for black people. We believe that we're building brands that, you know, if it's culture authentic and you, you know, appreciate because of that, that's great. But if it's not, you know, this is going to be widespread appeal because people are hungry for culture authentic brands where they can actually learn these 21st century skills. Absolutely. And I think too, that parents, even though they've had curriculum to date, I think now is the time when they're going to they're going to be home and they're going to start looking at the stuff and say, you know, is this relevant for my family? Are these things that I really Absolutely. care about? Right. Are, are, is there, yep. is there some merge of, of kind of what I think is important and what Encantus is doing? So I think this is your time for sure to, to really, you know, get out there. And, and I, I totally believe what you guys are doing. That's awesome. Very, very, very well, it's interesting, right? I mean, homeschooling, about 4% of America homeschools. I don't think people realize these numbers. That number is expected to triple within the next 18 to 24 months. And so you're going to see this massive kind of rethinking of how are our kids actually learning? And it goes back to that, you know, kind of original inspiration of Sir Ken Robinson you know, are schools killing creativity? Are schools really teaching the right things? This obsession with standardization and testing and measurement where you're really not learning. And I feel like it's really shining a light that there are many different ways that kids learn. You know, you could be a visual learner. You could be an auditory learner. You know, you might be on the spectrum somewhere. You might have dyslexia. How are those things actually really going to take advantage of digital technology so that you could truly personalize education? We have the most advanced personalization in e-commerce and in advertising. How on earth do we not have that in education? And that's kind of what I'm really most interested in. So that's what I want to dedicate the back nine to. Yeah, no, I think that's really super important. So just like looking at your career, I mean, you've held, you know, incredible jobs and incredible companies. Uh, so when you look back, What's the characteristic or trait that you possessed as a child that you wish you appreciated or still exhibited today? I mean, what, what was it? Look, I really credit one, I think part of it is the immigrant mindset. You know, my mother came here in the 60s when all of the kind of uh, upheaval was happening in the Dominican Republic. There was a dictator and he was overthrown. So there was a lot of unrest there. And, you know, my father, I, I just feel like they, they don't make men like this anymore, right? Like he was born in 1927. He played stickball in New York. He was born in the Bronx. And I just feel, you know, he was, you know, World War II, he's a merchant Marine. I just feel like it's like a different generation. So my parents were older, but I also feel that they were both artists. And because of that love for art and creativity, I, I didn't have the, you know, kind of business stress. Like they didn't know any better. Like my mom didn't really speak English well. And so like she didn't understand anything about the US educational system. So that was really all on kind of my own that I figured out a lot of trial and probably more error. Um, but I feel like the thing that they nurtured in me was just to be passionately curious. And I feel like that has led me to kind of try and experiment lots of different industries, lots of different fields, really just to try things and not be afraid of failure. And I feel like I didn't know any better because if I was told, oh, you can't do that, or you know, you're not gonna look good, or it's not gonna look good on a resume, I feel like I didn't know any better because I didn't have, you know, kind of that scaffolding of going to, you know, that, I don't know, Phillips Exeter or, you know, kind of being on the path and you know, being told that you have to do all these steps. That just wasn't my experience. And I feel like 
because I was always really passionately curious about people, places, and things, that became the connective tissue. And I can't even begin to tell you how important it's been for me to connect with people and have those people help me along the way at every single step of my career. That's been the common thread. It's been about the relationships. And I don't think people necessarily in their 20s or 30s appreciate how important those relationships are. But literally, the woman that helped me get my first summer internship on Wall Street, Rosanna DeRuthi, I'm still super close with her. She's basically my big sister. She's now the chief diversity officer of LinkedIn, actually. But you know, this is someone that, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even have a career. And so these are the kind of relationships that you just nurture over time. But I feel like that being passionately curious was really the common thread. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's the same. I mean, part of what I, as you mentioned, my book is coming out in October, and there's uh, more more than a few pages where I talk about my parents, and you know they had they had rules like growing up. So my dad's rule was that all five of us kids, I was the youngest of five, we all had to be in a sport. Like it was like he he didn't care what sport, and you know like I was primarily a gymnast and ran a lot and did softball. And, but I was always like trying something and my sister was a swimmer and my brothers played, you know, football and baseball. And they, they were like constantly, but my dad just really believed that like sports were really, really important. And that it like, he wouldn't care if like, we didn't want to do one. He's like, okay, go find another one. I mean, if I would have gone to him and said, okay, I'm going to play Frisbee and there's like this team, like you'd be, okay, fine. I don't really care. Like as long as you're doing something, like he really believed that there was like learnings. He never articulated why. And I didn't learn about it till like later. And anyway, and then my mom speaking, since, you know, your parents were, you, you were talking about them as artists. So my mom was an artist and, and she was an art history major. And anyway, when she passed away 11 years ago when she passed away at her funeral actually a few kids came back and reminded me about this program that my mom did in our grade school in Scottsdale Arizona where I grew up and she went in and volunteered whoever whatever classrooms would take her and of course we were horrified as her children that she was doing this but basically she went in and taught the difference between Picasso and a Matisse and like all of these basics and like she would go in, you know, and some teachers would say only at lunch hour, you can do it. And these kids would come in and they'd be, you know, they've learned like about all these different artists and she would like talk about them and why they're important and what they were trying to do. And again, like as kids, you may, you might've only picked up on a little things, but people tell me still to this day that they can walk into a museum and they can be, you know, they can see this stuff. And, you know, and they know it. And, you know, like my mom used to say to me, I mean, she'd see a house and she'd be like, oh, that's an Iger. That's a Frank Lloyd Wright. Like, and I'd be like, what? You know, like, what What are they, right? But but you learn through osmosis, right? Like it, you, you absolutely pick it up. And by the way, I think our moms would probably have been friends. My mother also taught art class at my grade school. Yeah. Um, I was equally embarrassed yeah. because, you know, it's your, it's mom, your mom and plus yeah, my mom no, had, totally. had a very thick accent, you know, instead of Stephen, it was a theming, yeah. right? So that, that uh, didn't make, you know, it any better, but she was, you know, teaching everything from sculpture and painting and, you know, it's the kind of thing where you just realize that I feel like our generation of parents, either they established these kind of, you know, rules, but it was like freedom within a framework. And I feel like that is about lifelong learning. And I feel like that's the thing that I'm so passionate about, which is how do you continue to inspire? Because we are all natural learners, right? Like you don't have to have, you know, I have a two and a half year old, right? Like I see her learning every single day. And somewhere in the transition from kindergarten, where you're really focused on social emotional, where it's really about learning and, you know, kind of the whole Montessori method and those kind of things, somehow it, it shifts to academics and you, you start to focus on testing once you're in grade school, right? And it only gets worse. And I feel like if there's a way that we can truly rethink this, right? Because kids are just naturally curious and we wanna foster that, we wanna tickle the brain as my co-founder Susie would always say. And so if we can really inspire kids to be lifelong learners, and especially now where I think the definition of what is education 
it's really going to shift, right? Because if, if you listen to Scott Galloway, if it's true, 40% of higher education, you know, universities and colleges are going to go out of business. You know, I think we all need to fundamentally rethink what education means and are we really learning the skills that are going to be important in the 21st century? Yeah, I agree. And it's not just, I, I think to your point and what Scott's talking about, it's not just about a package anymore. It's not just about a, you know, a, a you know, brand that is going to go on your resume, right? It's really about well, and that's why he talks about their luxury brands, yeah. right? He almost talks about how it's a disservice that they tout how many kids they turn away, right? That, oh, my acceptance rate was 4%. That's a disservice, right? And so I really feel like if we could democratize education and really focus on the things that kids need to know, because the other thing that we're not talking about, and you know, two plus decades in tech taught me this, this is the AI era, Kara. You know this. Anything that can be automated will be. And so what do you do when not just blue collar jobs, we're talking white collar jobs are going to go away. We're about to see the greatest decade of innovation start this fall with the launch of the first 5G iPhone. And it's not gonna to be tomorrow, but once you really start to see 5G permeate, not just in the US around the world, once you actually have the internet of things take off and everything is connected, all that data feeding artificial intelligence, and then you could download 4K video in a second, like this is going to be transformational what is going to happen over the next decade and AI is going to grow exponentially. So I feel like all of us are at the cusp of this major revolution. Yeah, I totally agree. It's a time when, you know, being in the education space, I think is it's challenging, right? And there's a lot that's still up in the air, but I think everything that you're talking about and customization around around programs is is really going to be top of mind and as long too especially this you know fall i think it'll be very very interesting to watch because i think parents are around and you know they're paying a little bit more attention and they're trying to decide well again so, some parents are around yeah. right because we have to go back to the income inequality right yeah. The, the, the parents with means are going to be around and they're going to do private tutors and do learning pods, but then there's going to be a whole swath of America that can't afford learning pods, that their parents are working two jobs and they can't stay home. They actually have to go because they're an essential worker, so they have to be in a store and wear a mask. And so you're going to see not just a lost school year, you're going to see potentially a lost decade, right? The impact on communities of color, low-income communities that cannot have the same means to have those learning tools and privileges, it's going to be devastating. And this is the kind of thing where I almost feel that, you know, we, we're, we're not working fast enough at Encantos. Like we need to do so much more to put out our, you know, products and services because we know that families need them. And if there's anything we could do to alleviate that. And how can you get it out faster? Like, how can you get it out to, I mean, you know, could you get it out to the mayor's office? Can you, you know, tell them, right? That these programs are available. It, like, I, I just think that there's, there's so much cool stuff that, you know, is a possibility. And well, you know, one, one of the things, you know, part of our core, we spoke about this earlier, you know, we're actually designed from the ground up as a purpose driven company. So we're not just a B Corp, we're actually a public benefit corporation, similar to Patagonia, similar to, you know, Kickstarter and Etsy and Allbirds. So we are a PBC. And that means that we don't just have shareholders at the center, we actually think about stakeholders. So that's people, profit and planet, of course. And so when you think about this, this is really how can we, as a public service, give back to you know, kids, parents, and educators. We have on every single one of our brands a free learning hub where we have free videos, free activity sheets, free resources, really trying to get that into the hands of folks so they could actually have this supplement whatever their you know, learning needs to be for kids at home. You know, we now have brands because we don't take advertising as a part of our model. We have brands now wanting to sponsor and to help bring our subscription app for Canticos and to bring that into school districts, bring it into families. It's very interesting to see how large brands are now waking up to the importance of education, especially as their employers are now home and their employees can't work if their kids are not being taken care of. So I feel like there's all these second and third derivative impact that folks haven't really thought of, but your kids at home, that impacts your ability to do work, that impacts, you know, all these other things. Um, and I think people are really realizing that education is a lot more important than we've all given it. Yeah, you know, and so much possibility. And like you're mentioning the divide, right? And, and it's not okay, right? And so, 
Wow, you've got my brain thinking on this stuff. I'm, I'm excited. Well, we're gonna have to find a way to partner with Hint because I mean, there's you know no more uh, powerful brand than Hint when it comes to obviously water and health and wellness. And for our Issa's Edible Adventures brand, we got to figure out a way that we can work together. Yeah, no, let's definitely talk more about that. That's awesome. Uh, so I always ask this last question: What makes you unstoppable? You you've talked a bit about this, and but. Also, just I'd love to hear it from you and, and really understand, like, what's next yeah. on the horizon? Well, I truly think that what makes me unstoppable is the values that my mother and father taught me. You know, you could get hit 10 times. You were going to get back up that 11th time. You just never, never, never give up. And now that I actually have a family, you know, my wife, Nuria, and my son, Sebastian, and Sienna, like, there is no bigger driver than for me to kind of put out these products where they could actually benefit. They are actually going to be the generation that can benefit from the things that we're putting out into the world. And so if there's anything that we can do, these are brands that are going to outlive us that will stand the test of time. And, you know, for me, there's no bigger goal. There's no better purpose for us to make Encantos the most impactful, important, and beloved entertainment-driven ed tech company on the planet. That's awesome. And where do people find you? Find you and find Encantos. Sure. So Encantos is EncantosBrands.com. You can see all of our beloved brands there. Um, and then, you know, for me, just follow me on Twitter at WolfBetAda <laughs> or go on to LinkedIn because, uh, you know, a lot of folks like to say that I'm the human LinkedIn. I uh, love connecting with folks. And again, anything that is going to help this world wake up to the fact that we need to personalize education and that we need direct to learner brands. I'm here to help. I love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Stephen. And gracias, Carla. Yeah. And if you guys like this podcast, please give us a great review and definitely subscribe to Unstoppable. And for more amazing, amazing guests, we're now, uh, Stephen, we're up to doing this twice a week now, Mondays and Wednesdays. So I love it. I'm a fan. I'm a subscriber. Yeah, no, it's, it's very, very exciting. And uh, if you guys hear you, Stephen, and anybody else, if you know of other, you know, great founders, disruptors, people who are just doing great, great stuff, let us know that as well. And we'd love to consider them to come on the podcast as well. So anyway, thank you so much. Have a great week. That was super, super awesome. And we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, everyone. If you like what you heard, please help spread the word and leave us a review. You can also follow along with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Kara Golden. Do you have a question for me or want to nominate an innovator to Spotlight? Please talk to me at Kara Golden on Twitter. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, be unstoppable. unstoppable. unstoppable.